Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Jebber Gaming Jaws here, coming to you with a PlayStation 1 collection video. Now, my PlayStation 1 collection, I would say, is decent. Um, I have a lot of games that I really do love, and a lot of the things that I um, have loved to play in the past, and also a lot of games that I want to play in the future. I would also say, though, it's totally not where I ultimately want it to be. There are a lot of games that I would really like to get. Um, I am a big fan of the PlayStation. Um, the PlayStation was the very first system that I ever bought with my own money. My family had a Sega Genesis growing up, but the PlayStation is very important to me because it was that transition period from when I stopped playing just what was put in front of me and I actually found something and I was like, that's what I want, I'm going to get that. I saved up my money for it, I went and bought it, and then the slew and the pantheon of gaming just opened up to me demo discs, borrowing games from friends, talking to friends about what games they were playing and going out and buying them, going to um, Babbage's at the time and, you know, looking through their games and finding things that I want wanted. So um, I've pulled down my PlayStation 1 collection. I would say the PlayStation 1 has traditionally been my favorite console of all time. I've recently started getting really nostalgic for the PlayStation 4. Um, you know, the last decade, I had a really good time playing games on the PS4. It was one of the best periods of gaming in my life. So that's probably the only system that's right now giving a little bit of a competition to PlayStation. But I would say for like the last 15 to 20 years, I have considered the PlayStation 1 as my favorite console of all time. So for the time being, let's just go under that assumption. <laughs> Not that it totally matters, but just you know, to create some context here. I really, really love the PlayStation. So, all right, so let's uh, get going here. There's there's so many amazing games for the PlayStation 1. RPGs are my bread and butter. That, um, if you can understand why <laughs> I would love the PlayStation, um, understand that I love RPGs. So it's not that RPGs are the only thing that, um, the PlayStation has to offer, but at the time, Squaresoft and other companies were firing on all cylinders. RPGs were taking over the mainstream gaming media, um, the gaming landscape, basically. They were changing the entire world. Like, they were popular in a way that, like, Call of Duty is popular now. Mainstream people loved turn-based RPGs, if you can believe that or not. <laughs> Nowadays, so so many people will not go anywhere near them, and they turn their nose up to it, and uh, they think they're just too good for it. But there was a time when turn-based RPGs were the most groundbreaking, incredibly immersive games that were absolutely shocking the world. And that's a time that I really greatly miss, personally. Um, there's a specific aesthetic to the PS1's graphics that I love so much. Um, people will all the time say that the visuals on the PlayStation 1 didn't age well. To me, when I look at PlayStation graphics, that's what my brain equates a video game as looking like. Like that, that to me is a video game. One thing that was really cool in a lot of, um, games at the time is that whereas today you'll be like right behind a character the entire time and that's your point of view and you never veer from that or you're in first person and you almost never veer from that <sighs> with um games on the playstation there were so many times where you would be seeing a whole field and your character's way in the distance or they're coming in from this direction or you know it's like every time that you would get to a new screen you had a new completely different point of view and that was so interesting to me. It was more like reading a story picture book. It was really, really an incredible thing to experience. And if you haven't played games from that era, you probably are having a hard time understanding what I'm talking about. But for those of you who are there, those of you who love it like I do, you know. Anyways, um, I'm going to take my time with this video. It's probably going to be pretty long. Um, I'm going to, you know, if I have anything interesting to say about the things... Um, I'll probably go ahead and take my time and do it. Try not to belabor things too much, but, you know, it's probably what we're all here for anyway. So, <laughs> all right, without further ado, I'm going to get started here. Uh, this game I picked up probably back in 2013. This was right when I was getting into collecting, quote-unquote, collecting games. 
Um, I had never heard of this before. I was at a game store. I saw it. It seemed like a good deal. And I um, actually went onto a Facebook group at the time that was for collecting video games. And I was so green. I didn't know anything about collecting. Um, I didn't know the, you know, the general culture and vibe. So I innocently went on there and I said, hey guys, I found this game for $9.99. Does that seem like a good deal? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> uh, I was attacked. <laughs> people were so angry and yelling at me all caps in the comments saying it's people like you who are ruining this hobby and being focused on the cost of things is the problem yada 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 so that was very educational and I realized that uh <laughs> not everybody is um sane when it comes to <laughs> collecting video games and a lot of people are very um intense and so you have to be careful um but anyways i picked this up because i thought it looked really cool it's a two disc game unfortunately i just opened it up and realized that it didn't come with the booklet so that's kind of a bummer here is a series that i really want to play the fear effect games i've had these in my collection for a while and sadly i've not not played them i do remember when they came out and i was on gaming message boards at the time and i was looking at screenshots and stuff and it just sounded awesome and it looked awesome and uh, i thought that the art style seemed really cool i know that uh the games control with the tank controls which are hard for a lot of people nowadays but i don't generally tend to mind them so Hopefully I'll get to those at some point. I really need to dive back into actually playing my PlayStation 1. There's a lot that I would really, really like to get to. <sighs> Hopefully that'll be happening. This is a game, Jet Moto 2. This cover is just like emblazoned in my mind for my entire life. I've seen this millions of times, it feels like. I've never played it, but it's a good racing game that I've heard is amazing, and I'm excited to give that a try at some point. Every once in a while, I'll get in the mood for a racing game, and I just kind of go ham with one, and I'm sure that I will that with that at some point. I also really like racing games from that period. Um, the last one that I went absolutely nuts with was Hydro Thunder on the N64. Just had so much freaking fun. I literally ended up doing speed running for that game. It was awesome. All right. One of the absolute best games for the system, Metal Gear Solid. I just realized that I actually have two copies. Um, a lot of times if I have um, a cheap copy that I find of like an amazing game that I love, I'll pick it up. That doesn't happen very often anymore because shit is so freaking expensive. But years ago, it would happen regularly where I would find something and it was a good deal. And I would oftentimes grab a second copy um, just in case I would have a friend. I, I always thought that, you know, maybe like some of my friends would get into retro gaming and actually want to play stuff and collect stuff along with me. That really didn't happen. <laughs> like, um, you know, so I have one, one cousin who got into collecting. He doesn't play games that much, but he does collect. Um, he plays a little bit and, uh, but yeah, so I have a second copy of this. I'll probably give that to somebody or trade it at some point if I ever find another game that the exact same thing happened. I actually bought this Legend of Dragoon. I played through the whole thing. Um, my first time experiencing this game was actually as a kid on a demo disc and I really liked it and back then I was playing a bunch of RPGs on the system. I played the demo disc over and over. Really um, wish that I had gone and bought it. So when I saw this years later, I actually bought this for like $12.99. It was a great deal at the time. Um, and it's complete, really good condition and everything like that. Years later, I actually found a second copy, which was not in as good a condition, but it is complete. Um, doesn't have the booklet, but it has all the discs. So I grabbed that as well. So um, another game that I have a second copy for, for no real good reason. Probably have to find somebody to give that to or trade away to. Oh man, what a game. This is an absolute freaking banger. Um, if you've not played Xenogears, you absolutely should. This game is bigger than you can imagine. The things that they put into this game, like religion and philosophy and 
multiple personalities and personality disorders and cannibalism and like so much there's so much in this game i don't even i don't even know like how to fully articulate the intensity and like the depths oh like drug addiction for soldiers forcing them to you know fight oh my goodness it just it was awesome that game is so good it's so good it's so much fun and everybody should play that if you like rpgs um metal gear solid vr missions i never really got into that um i like just playing the regular game twisted metal loved these games so freaking much i actually had this one as a kid and i played this way more i had a friend who had this one and we did play this whenever we were at his house um i've never had the first one or played the first one i'd like to buy that i'm thinking it comes in a long box version i'd really like to get the long box i think that'd be pretty cool but twisted metal this is still amazing i would love so much if i could find people to actually play these games with me today do some multiplayer because i freaking have so much fun with that Oh man, this was the first game that I ever said that's my favorite game of all time. I can't even describe how much I loved Siphon Filter. And again, this is a game that I had actually found through a demo disc. Um, I played that demo disc over and over and over and over and finally I got the game and just went ham, devoured it. I think this is the very first game that I ever remember actually beating. And I felt so accomplished and I felt so good. Um, one of my buddies, I remember, had the strategy guide and he sat next to me and would help me get through the levels and stuff because I was kind of a stupid kid. I was kind of like 11 years old and I was like, you know, having a hard time getting through a lot of it. And I, it just felt awesome going one step at a time, getting there. Um, eventually the second one came out. This was so cool because it had multiplayer. And I had played the first one so freaking much that I was actually really good at it by that time. So anytime I would play with my friends, I would just headshot them and just absolutely destroy. And it was like tons of fun. Um, the main game was really fun too. The story was great. Um, by the time this one came out, I bought it. I don't really remember that much about it though. I know that I played it um, somewhat, but I don't think I ever beat it. In fact, I'm certain I never beat it. I beat the first two. Um, I would definitely like to go back and actually play this whole series again. I have played the first one a little bit and um, still holds up, still super fun. Very, um, very much like so similar. You can see, see exactly where third person shooting got its start. And like that game, there's so many similarities to it. And, um, T like between it and modern day third person shooting games it's it's really awesome to see where they've come all right getting into my absolute favorite series on the system i'm sure that it's not hard to guess if you know anything about me <laughs> final fantasy now when this one came out it was crazy i played final fantasy 4 and chrono trigger final fantasy 4 was so freaking hard um, I remember for the last boss, I sat there and I level grinded for 10 hours and I finally beat the last boss. And I remember thinking that didn't really feel like that was worth it. I don't know for sure, but I believe that this is the hard version of the game. I think that the one on the Super Nintendo was an easier version and this one was a harder version. Somebody can let me know if I'm wrong on that. Um, but I've played the game since then on the Super Nintendo and I didn't have anywhere near that kind of trouble towards the end. So that's the way I generally will play that game. I, I play Chrono Trigger also on the Super Nintendo at this point. You can see it sitting right there. But, uh, um, but this was the first way that I ever played it and I'm so thankful that I had this option. Um, you know, it was kind of amazing to get introduced to such classic, amazing games when I didn't have a Super Nintendo. I didn't even know that these had been on Super Nintendo. I didn't, I didn't have any idea of that. My life changed when my brother-in-law gave me Final Fantasy VII. This game totally blew my mind. My very first memory of encountering Final Fantasy VII was being on vacation. And, uh, we were at a Target 
and my dad was with me and my younger siblings were with me. We were all in the gaming area and there was this, you know, bigger kid. He was probably maybe high school, you know, cause I was probably 12 or something. Um, I was like middle school probably. And, um, he was older and he was just beaming and he was telling me and my dad all about this game. And I was just standing there with it like, oh. Like everything that he was telling me was just blowing my mind and like looking at the back it just captured my imagination so intensely and i couldn't believe that it came on three discs and it was just like what in the world but my dad said no i couldn't get it <laughs> so that was annoying my family was a little bit um on the on the conservative side and they liked to be sheltered about things like magic and whatever so that was kind of a bummer for me when it came to gaming. It was hard for me to get into stuff. But down the road, brother-in-law came over and he was like, here, you can borrow this. And I borrowed it and I played the shit out of it. And anytime that my parents came in the room, I would turn it off <laughs> and I'd go do something else because I wasn't going to have anybody tell me that I couldn't play Final Fantasy VII. I moved on from then, played 8. I love 8 completely. It's so good. It's not, I don't love it as much as 7, but I love it. I love, love, love this game. Um, it's funny because people talk about how you can break the battle system and everything so much. And I don't know. I've just never done that. I've never pursued learning how to do that. I generally just try to play it the way that it's presented to me. And I have always had a really good time. Um, it's, it's awesome. I love the story. I love the characters. It's a great journey to go on. It's uh, different in tone, but it's not bad by any means. It's super, super good. Final Fantasy IX, absolute masterpiece. I still remember when this first came out. I remember looking in the ads and being so excited that it was coming out. I remember going and getting it, bringing it home, playing it that night, and just being so blown away and just absolutely freaking loved it. Here is a game that I have played a bit. I played 10 hours of Vagrant Story. I really like it. I like a lot about it. This game is hard. This game is complicated. I actually have the strategy guide. I was still having trouble. I'm going to start this game over at some point and actually have to very seriously learn the combat so I know what I'm doing. But it's awesome. It's beautiful. Um, it's Squaresoft in their heyday. I mean, how can you really go wrong with that, you know? Here's an RPG that I have not played at all. I picked this up at Too Many Games two years ago. Um, Happy Console Gamer talked about this game. He talked about how much this game meant to him. Um, it reminded him a lot of his friends when uh, his dad passed. So that kind of left him you know, an impact on me just hearing him talk about it. I thought, man, that sounds great. Plus, it's an RPG on the PS1. It's going to be right up my alley, I'm sure. It's it has to be pretty shitty for me to not enjoy that, so. Let's see. I picked up Tarzan on PlayStation. Gaming Off the Grid guys said that this is a real banger. Actually, like, a super fun platformer, so I was like, shit, okay, I'll grab it. It's cheap, whatever. Tekken. Gotta love Tekken. I need to buy Tekken 2 and 3. I think Tekken 3 is probably the one that I would actually play a lot, but this was at the store and it was cheap, so I grabbed it. Uh, one Final Fantasy game I have not played on this system, Final Fantasy Tactics. I really do need to play this game at some point. People love this game. I'm not that big into like strategy RPGs for whatever reason. I've never actually gotten into them, so this would probably be a nice foray into that. We got Crash 2. Love the, love the Bandicoot. How can you not? Symphony of the Night. So, to be completely honest, I've had a harder time getting into this game than I expected. Um, people, of course, rave about it like it's the best thing in the world. I've false started it a couple of times um, where I'd start and play for a while, um, get stuck or just get frustrated and just like quit. I really like the traditional um, Castlevania games. However, back in January, I actually played through Circle of the Moon on Game Boy Advance, and it was like a light bulb went off, and it was one of the best things I've ever done. I did actually play this to the point where the castle flips over, so I at least got halfway through. Spoiler if you haven't played this yet, but I mean, I think pretty much everybody already has. <laughs> so, um... 
but uh, let's see. So, you know, I have put some decent time into it. It kind of frustrated me, like, there were some things, like, with the clock. Like, I was like, how in the hell would I have ever figured that out if I didn't look that up? But anyways, I think that this game is probably amazing, and the problem is probably me, and I do need to go back and just absolutely play through this. Um, it's really pretty. Um, the art, the sprites, 32-bit sprites on the PlayStation look amazing. Get that going on a CRT. I have not played this, Blood Omen Legacy of Cain, but it looks amazing, looks really good, heard good things. I played um, Soul Reaver on the Dreamcast and loved that game, so I know that this is tied to that. This was the first game I ever bought for the PlayStation. This is not my original copy, unfortunately, um, but yeah, before I owned a PlayStation, I went to a birthday party and we played this all night long. And it was at that point that I just, it was cemented in my head and I was like, I'm getting a PlayStation. I don't care what it takes, I'm getting one. So we get in, another awesome JRPG. I haven't played this first one. I actually played the second one and I'm really pissed at myself because I sold the second one. Like an idiot years ago. So I need to get the second one back. Um, and then I would like to play the first one and the second one in succession and i guess your save file can go from the first to the second if you do it like that so that'd be pretty cool i'm a big soulsborne fan so when i found these at the store apparently this is from the same company um i don't think that it has anything to do with hitataki miyazaki so you know like it's a very loose tie in but they're on playstation they're kind of collectible and hard to find and um they're notorious and it's definitely something that I just was like even if I don't totally get into them I want to I want to have that experience and I love having that in my collection man I just feel like I never play video games another game that I need to play <laughs> Lunar Silver Star Story I bought this years ago um I want to play this everybody who's played it loves it um yeah it was originally on Sega CD and apparently this is the version to play though, so very excited about that. Another series that I need to get into, Squaresoft. Again, I'm sure that I will absolutely love these when I play them. Haven't done it yet, but Parasite Eve 1 and 2. Um, I've heard that they're quite different from each other. A lot of people who really like the first one don't really love the second one, but you know, just gotta give it a whirl. <laughs> okay, so... A little bit of a story time. A couple of years ago, um, Clonoa 1 and 2 was released, HD versions. I remember hearing about how expensive this was on the PlayStation 1. I remember hearing people just rave about it. I am, I especially at that time, I was not big into platformers. This game actually kind of changed me in that way. Like, I like some platformers, but I'm so much more often into, like, story driven like role-playing games that sort of thing um so i played the hd version being like well i would never spend that kind of money on a playstation one game like that's crazy are you nuts so i played the hd version i fell so freaking in love with the first game that i was like i have to get the playstation version so i did get the playstation version played through this this is my favorite way to play that the game is just so special it everything that people say about it is true it's a special game it's a special story it's a special character there's just something that's so beautifully innocent about it and dark at the same time it's masterful absolutely couldn't not have this in my collection i would recommend it to anybody but um if you want the hd version i mean the hd version is so good that it made me fall in love with it and go buy that game so like that tells you how good that is one of my favorite rpgs on the system chrono cross i am one of the absolute nuts out here who actually prefers this one over chrono trigger not knocking chrono trigger i love chrono trigger but chrono cross whoo this game is amazing that first opening sequence like when you first put it in and it just plays the opening movie that is a banger if you've never seen it pull it up on youtube it's so awesome the music showing all the different characters it's just it's just awesome so freaking amazing i really liked um 
that in this game it was bouncing between two different timelines um so it was like parallel worlds at the same time so you could take characters from one world and go to the other world and they could meet their other version of themselves that was cool um the main bad guy in this game is just awesome links he's up here and something really cool happens at the midway point that changes the game completely so awesome if you guys have played it you already know what i'm talking about i really like the gameplay too oh shoot my light just went out oh well we're doing it without it i guess let's see yeah screw it you guys can still see i think spyro the dragon i played this this was another demo disc man the demo disc thing was a big deal um so we played this on a demo disc as a family after i first bought my system and we all loved it so much. So I think my dad actually went out and bought Spyro. This is not my original version, but um, that is the game. Here is a game that is pretty sought after, hard to find. It's kind of like a horror RPG. And I'm very excited to dive into this at some point. Um, I picked this up because it was at my game store and it was in good condition and then I started looking up videos on it and the intrigue is real I'm very excited about that game at some point I have a couple of long box games here this I found at a yard sale Ridge Racer Ridge Racer and this is Doom long box this is a great version of this game lots of fun to play these are in really good condition I just really love them let's see here Resident Evil. So, of course, I'm sure that everybody watching this, especially if you're still here by now, you're really into PlayStation and collecting and all that. So you guys know the difference. This one has the music that everybody hates, but it does allow the DualShock use. This one is by far what people say is the right version to play. I bought both. I really like using the DualShock. But, um controller you know like the joystick so i'm not a big fan of being stuck with a d-pad but maybe it won't be so bad with this game um i played resident evil 2 on dreamcast so i was like oh screw it i better go back and get the original one and actually experience that so that will be happening at some point here's a game i've not played but it's kind of like renowned on the system and it was cheap so i decided to grab that here's a really fun racing game that i love so much this again was introduced to me um, by a demo disc back in the day, and it's a great game. Absolutely recommend it. All right, guys, that's been my PlayStation 1 collection. I have a ton of other games, ton of other even just RPGs that I really want to get. Um, so my emphasis with collecting the PlayStation 1 is not to go for just anything. I only want games that I consider good and games that I would want to play. Um, the library is way too vast. There are some systems that I collect everything willy-nilly. If I don't have it, I'll grab it. But most, for the most part, those are cartridge-based systems like the NES, Super NES, um, N64. Yeah, I'm even picky when it comes to the Sega Genesis because I collect those complete in box and that takes up a lot of space. So I only want to collect games for that system that I really want. But I love collecting NES and Super NES and N64 cartridges, just there's something really fun about that. But with PlayStation, I only want what I think is quality, good, that I actually want to play. If uh, if there's things I missed, I, kn I know there are a lot of things I missed. Like I need Crash 1 and 3. I need um, Crash Team Racing. I need uh, like Spyro 2 and 3, you know, um, probably the Tony Hawk games. There's a lot of just staple games that I'm missing that I'd like to track down at some point along with some of the heavy hitters, like the Squaresoft RPGs that I'm missing and would really like to get. But this is going on long enough. This is a half hour into the three of you that are still there. Thank you for watching. <laughs> All right. Have a good one. Peace out.